Good afternoon, Dr. McKenzie. Good afternoon, Dr. Dawson. Great to be with you. Pre-COVID and, and pre this pandemic, what percentage of people from the in clinical trial was actually from uh, the Black population and the Latinx communities? It's not a good number. Uh, so today, about 12% of the U.S. population is Black, but they account for only about 5% of the people in clinical trials. And for Latinx, only 1% of the participate in clinical trials. So you can see that uh, in today's clinical trial settings, uh, the Black and Latinx populations are underrepresented, which means that it's not the best uh, study we can do uh, because it doesn't represent the full population that might be uh, able to take the medicine or vaccine. Where do you think that uh, the Black and the Latinx communities are not participating in clinical trial? Do you have any um, data, uh, just opinions about some of the barriers that uh, research scientists as yourself are running into in terms of recruiting these individuals to participate? First of all, it's not a single thing. I think there are very many reasons that uh, people struggle uh, to be part of a clinical trial. I think the main one is actually lack of trust. Uh, lack of trust for very good reasons historically in the healthcare system. But there are other uh, examples as well. Uh, language barriers are a big one. Uh, low levels of awareness are another one. People are not familiar with research practices. They may not have access to uh, healthcare in the first place. And of course, another one is that uh, it can be a costly endeavor. Uh, to be part of a clinical trial and it can be disruptive to your life. You may have to visit clinical trial sites. But of all the big ones, I think trust is the biggest and I think it's the most troubling because there's very good reason for it. To take an example, in the black community, many will still remember the syphilis study that was conducted in Tuskegee, Alabama on black. And even though that study ended 50 years ago, you can imagine just the sentiments and betrayal and exploitation that was felt in the community probably panded down generation to generation, still today resonating in a lack of trust. So I think that's probably the biggest one. It's the hardest, of course, to, uh, to change overnight. And it won't change overnight. We need to have a sustained commitment to building trust with the Black community, but also the Latinx community before we could reasonably expect uh, them to be part of our clinical trials. And we are doing lots to try and achieve that. So given this lack of trust, why should people feel comfortable uh, joining and contributing to this particular clinical trial study that you all are doing with the COVID-19? The first thing to say is that we and everyone else actually who is developing a vaccine for, for COVID or conducting any kind of clinical trial. We're not doing it alone. We're not doing it in a vacuum. It's a highly regulated uh, circumstance. And uh, a lot of very independent people review everything that we do. Obviously, we have our own ethical standards. We have our own commitments to quality and to safety. It's our number one priority in any clinical study we do. And we have our own internal quality groups that ensure that we keep these high standards. But uh, I think it's not reasonable to expect us as the public to, to trust us, you know, to police ourselves. And so there's plenty of uh, publicly appointed bodies. So for example, um, we have these independent institutional review boards, we call them IRBs, and we have informed consent processes and practices so that nobody can come into a clinical study without having a thorough review of everything that will happen and so that they can make what we call an informed judgment about whether they want to be part of the trial. Um, not only are, is everything that we do in the study reviewed by these uh, independent review boards, and that, by the way, these independent review boards are made up of doctors and scientists and lay people as well, who are dedicated to making sure that people who get involved in clinical trials, what we call the study participants, are not exposed to any unnecessary risk. Um, so that's one of the reasons why I think people should be confident. The other, of course, is that everything we do is regulated by health authority, whatever country uh, we're working in, in the world. 
in the United States, of course, is the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA. And uh, we need their permission before we even start a clinical trial. And I can tell you that they are thorough in their review and they also set very high standards for us to achieve. So there's some of the reasons why people might feel some confidence in being part of a study. What is Pfizer doing at this time? to increase uh, diversity in their research and in their clinical trials. And by that, I mean uh, those scientists that may look like the communities that they're reaching out to, to bring people into this clinical trial. We are uh, doing a lot actually, because it's so important to us that we get some representation into the study. Um, first of all, we're reaching out to all the different communities we're working with all of our trusted partners and people and listening. We're listening to their needs. We're listening to their concerns. And we're working with our advocacy partners. Actually, of course, as you know, the National Black Nurses Association uh, is one of the people that we're reaching out to, to listen and, and hear what we need to do differently in order to increase trust and to, to gain um, some clinical trial diversity. A lot of what we're doing is also providing information through ads, through news releases. We're doing social media posts. We're providing, you know, question and answer on our website. And we're doing this in multiple languages um, in other ways so that we can disseminate some sort of truthful and accurate information about our clinical trials. But largely it's about listening and reacting and working with people who are trusted within the communities that we're trying to serve people.